Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video. We've got this HP laptop, this G62 laptop, to show off today. So, uh, you know, here's a, the top here, kind of silvery, uh, patterned top, and then uh, nothing really going on in the back. We have our power. We have a, a blackout here for a modem kind of shows the age of this system that it would have been around when a modem might have been an opportunity for for connection obviously doesn't exist anymore today <laughs> a usb port optical port here or optical drive sorry front of the unit here we have nothing going on it's pretty pretty sparse and then we'll move around to the opposite end we've got a multi-card reader here we have a well, I think is an indicator light here for disk drive activity. We have audio connectors, two more USB ports, our Ethernet port, HDMI, and VGA output. And then you can see there is a bit of a opening here for exhaust for our CPU. If we take a look on the bottom here, you can kind of see the fan where the CPU uh, cooling would be. The CPU is actually located underneath this plastic part here. And then we've got two doors and a battery. I'm actually going to open this up and show off here what's going on with this. So we remove the battery from this system. And then we can remove our two drawers here with the, with the good old orange screwdriver. The trusty orange screwdriver. All right, so door number one. We have our memory installed. So I've got four gig of RAM installed on this system. It's two two gig memory sticks. And then we have our Wi-Fi adapter here. And then you can see we also have our CR2032 CMOS battery. And then under the final door, we will locate, did I get that screw up all the way? I did not. There we go, our hard disk drive. So the hard disk drive's in a carrier, which, uh, yeah, doesn't have any additional screws. However, it is kind of weird that it's got this, and I hate it when companies do this, but you see this here? We've got a dongle adapter. So it's a regular SATA drive. Instead of having this SATA connector like built into the system board, which, I mean, take a look. There's room there, right? Instead of putting that SATA connector over here, and having this dongle to have to connect them up, you could have just put it on the board, but they didn't do that. So for you to be able to replace it, if this drive was lost, right, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have to order this part from HP, which who knows even how much this would cost and probably isn't even sold anymore. It was probably only something that they made available for like two or three generations of systems and then was gone. Anyways. I digress. Uh, that's a that's a serviceability uh, issue that uh, thankfully we don't have to deal with on all computers. It's only you know the select ones here and there where the companies are not really thinking about the long term usability of a product because they're expecting it to be used for you know three to five years and then thrown in the waste bin, which is obviously not the best way to treat computers and not what I do here on this channel. We are trying to give them new life, not end their life prematurely. All right, let's make sure that this tape piece is kind of out of the way and we're gonna get these doors back on so we can continue with our look at this system. Now I've been in and out of this system uh, a couple of times and the reason for that is I actually have another one of these models right here um, that uh, I've had for a while and it was it was not working properly, uh, but it had a battery and the hard drive. And then I got this one donated to me, which was missing the battery and hard drive with that dongle. But this one had a working CPU and or motherboard and that one did not. And uh, that's actually uh, was a problem. I've had, I think three now. Yeah, I currently have three 
of this era of Athlon slash Turion slash Phenom 2 um, S1 G2, G3, and G4 based systems. That's the socket type. And uh, all of those ones are are uh, not working properly. And I'm pretty sure it's the system board because um, I actually had ordered a replacement CPU off AliExpress, which, you know, could be a bad CPU as well. Um, and it didn't work on any of them either. Um, but this CPU works. The system board works. Um, I tested this board with, uh, I think this one has a Turion 2. And I tried the other Turion 2 and it worked as well. And uh, I just kind of left it at that. So I didn't want to fry this board if it was the processor that was the issue. Anyways, so I got this one opened up. It's been repasted and cleaned on the inside and uh, was not... I, I don't want to say it was incredibly difficult to work with from a serviceability standpoint, but it wasn't obviously the most serviceable laptop I've ever worked on. Um, it, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, lots of little dongles and cables that were hard to work with. Uh, we'll take a look here. Here is our front tray here it's weird having this like touchpad area here as you can see but there's no actual touchpad it's kind of like built right into the screen so you don't know where the touchpad ends and begins which i kind of feel not having the borders is a little bit odd but who knows and then i hate these when you have these buttons where it's one button built in so it's right click the enough click but which one is i don't know anyways not the greatest and a pretty a pretty crappy keyboard if you ask me it's not the island style keyboard right where you've got a space in between each key that you can you can feel when you push this down i'm getting into the other keys at the same time which is i i don't like that at all i do not like that at all but it works and that's really what's important so uh we're gonna take a closer look at this thing from a boot perspective i'm going to adjust the camera angle so we're lined up on the screen and we're going to get booted Okay, we're all lined up now. We're gonna hit the power button, get ourselves booted up on this G62. We have a low battery alert, and that's obviously because this has been sitting not plugged in for a while, and that leads to the battery draining and needing to charge back up. So just hit enter and let that continue with the boot sequence. This is a 15 inch uh, LCD screen, and then we do have a built-in camera which is good actually, uh, where these systems usually end up is in the uh, hands of a student. So being able to not only do basic productivity and cloud-based workloads, but also being able to participate with a camera on those Zoom and Google Hangouts uh, meetings is quite useful. Windows is gonna take a little bit of time obviously to boot up with a spinning hard disk drive probably 5400 rpm not going to be getting a ton of drive read and write performance out of this oh there you go battery's low i already know that computer computer i already know that let's take a look at our specs on this system we will run hardware info on here. I believe I installed the 64-bit version of Windows 10. This being not a horribly out-of-date system when it comes to performance. I f yeah, 64-bit would be the preferred choice. So this will take a couple seconds here while the application grabs a hold of all of the sensor data that it needs all right and we will close this up and then we'll show off what we have so this AMD Turion 2 is a p520 processor it's a dual core so a two core two thread processor running at about 2.4 2.3 gigahertz so decent uh, we have 160 gig hard drive and then that DVD CD burner for optical, 4 gig of RAM, and that's a pair of Samsung uh, PC310600 DIMMs, 
Uh, so, I mean, they're, you know, they're fine. They're currently running at 667 megahertz, uh, obviously clocking down a little bit for the, uh, for the system board here. And then for graphics, this system actually has a mobility Radeon HD 4200 with 256 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty decent for a laptop of this time period. It's also great because we're not sharing video memory with the onboard memory. So that four gig of RAM that's installed is 100% going to making sure Windows is running as crisply as possible. And as well, having the little bit of extra, that 256 megabytes of RAM is good for making sure that we don't have to clock down any of the Windows performance aspects. So it can just run the way it needs to run and everything's gonna be working properly. Good, so we can close that out. And what we will do now is, I think we'll take a look at a little bit of a crab rave and see how this performance is handled. Okay, so I've got Crab Rave here and finished buffering it up. Because the screen here being a low-end screen at only 1366 by 768 resolution, I'm only gonna be trying to do 720p to start here. And we'll see if the system can actually handle that. We've got Stat for Nerds running here so we can keep an eye on the frame drops. And then hopefully with, you know, the compression of me recording a screen on my phone and then that being compressed for YouTube as well. If we see any of the stutters, I'll probably see them where you might not. But the frame drops really will tell most of the story here as far as how well it's working. And honestly, it's pretty good. Um, I will note the fan is really working hard. Yeah, that fan is, uh, is going heavy, trying to keep the, the processor from overheating. That's pretty funny, actually. But we're, we're now, you know, across the minute mark here and we're getting into 2000 frames and only 16 drop frames, which is pretty darn good, I would say. So that's our look at this HP G62 laptop that's been repaired and ready to go to donation. I hope you enjoyed checking out this video as well as uh, all the other videos on my in my channel here where I catalog the machines that I donate to charity as well as some other nostalgia machines. As always, hope you're staying safe and healthy. We'll catch you in the next one.